Hello, everybody, and welcome back for our next part on this beautiful Christmas quilt of the nativity scene. Um, so let me start back over here. Let me go over a few of the details that I've done so far. Um, and I will be doing throughout, so I'll show you a few of the detail shots as we work our way through the quilt. This one was fairly simple. You saw the beginning when we did the, um, the angel's face here, um, and then the wings as well. So here, I tried to stay pretty traditional and simple based on the architecture of Bethlehem um, of the time and what our archetypes uh, and symbolism would tell us. And then, of course, on the shepherd's face, you can see I added a, a little bit more of the textural aspect. We have the lights low so that you can see the texture. And then, of course, here is the... Um, here, of course, is the tree, um, palm tree. So I'm working on that right now, and we'll finish that. Um, and again, we will see some more of that down the road. When I get down here, if you want to come over to the sheep, Mr. Ritchie, um, we'll go through this sheep together. And um, so pretty much what I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm keeping things fairly simple. And then what I'm going to do is all of this will pop forward because I'm going to put a filler over here in our open areas around everything. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to start with that filler, and I'm just going to start with a basic swirl. I want something that's going to tighten everything, push everything into the background. There's no reason to go crazy with the filler. For a little visual interest, I might throw in some feathers because, of course, that's what I do. I'm going to stick pretty much with my basic filler for this particular piece. Um, so I'm going to head over. I'm going to start doing that. Uh, and again, you can look back at some of the tutorials. We do have the, um, the swirl filler and the feather filler, is that correct, drawn out um, on tutorials, previous tutorials. And we will start there, and we'll work our way through the rest of this quilt. So now I have locked my stitches here on the edge. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna do our background filler. I've changed my thread. We're no longer on invisible thread. We are on isocord top and bottom, matching the background. And I'm gonna simply start with my swirls, get close to the um, angel and all of the different figures within the quilts, all the elements. And I'm going to start with my swirls on the wings. Of course, I'm going to stylize it a little bit. Again, this is where you get to kind of ad lib and do your thing, especially if it's a filler that you're used to doing. This one I've done for thousands of quilts, which is simply the swirl. I'm going to add again some feathers right around the wings, attach them to the wings. That way, in negative light, you're going to see the feathers. It's going to give it a really cool look. Now when I go into the other places, I'm going to tighten up around any of the places that I want it to be uh, almost faux trapunto, like in this tight area. Go just a little bit tighter. That way the angel will pop forward. Echo all the feathers so they pop. Once is good, three or four times is always better.
Okay, and now I would continue all the way across the quilt, um, alternating between the tight filler and the regular filler that I'm doing here in all of the blank areas. Okay, so now we're down to the sheep, and <laughs> okay, we better do that over because that's horrible. Isn't it? <laughs> okay, so we are down to the sheep right now. So n now I'm sorry, I get it. Should okay, that's it. That's all. That's all. All right, so we're at the sheep, and um. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna ditch everything, and then I'm gonna put a design inside the sheep uh, for another example of an option. Again, I'm not gonna fill this with a whole lot. What I think I'm gonna do, since we're doing a little bit of straight line work, is maybe some crosshatch. Uh, but I think I'll, I'll do 45 degree crosshatch, and I'll use this seam as my guide for my 45 degree. So, first, I need to go around and do my ditch work. Okay, so the inside, I'm gonna go ahead and I did basting stitches up the side. So I am at five stitches per inch. Let me change that to 12 stitches per inch. There we go. That would have been Bad. bad. That would have been bad. The machine even sounds like it's saying it. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill in this portion with the white. And I did change to my isocord white to do this section. And that's the same thread I'll be using inside the sheep. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, ditch around the sheep in that white as well, whether than, rather than just changing to um, the invisible thread. Just because there's no reason to, I will, by error, I will err to the white portion around there. Okay, so now let me cut stitches. 
I've got that filled in. I then will go in shortly and you'll see me do it and I'll go ahead and I'll do some echoing of that triangle a little bit inside this black area with black thread. And then I will probably, after I've ditched around here, I will also go inside and do another circle around the inside of that face. So we're gonna do needle up, pull away, lock my stitches, and let me audition. There we go. That's a little closer, it's not the exact. But again, whenever you come to a curve that's not exact, you just pivot it. Okay, and now, um, I think I'll go ahead and I will do the inside first. Grab my glasses. I'm going to stop here now, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go around that ear. Being aware of this new foot on my machine. There have been a few times, as a lot of you who have any of the Innovas know, where I did have to kind of re-remind myself because I felt myself tilting the ruler a little bit um, or pivoting it and I could tell that the, it made a little thunk. But thank goodness I didn't get it. Okay, so now come around the bottom, get my hand, Okay, and now I am going to grab my small curve. All right. Alright, so we've got the outside done. I'm going to switch to my black thread. Okay, so now I have changed the black thread. Stay right inside the black, the black head of the sheep. Okay, and I'm going to sneak over here, grab the ear.
Okay, lock my stitches. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look at that circle. That is a six and a half inch finished. So I'm gonna grab a smaller circle. I am going to grab a, okay, so this one is a five and a half inch finished. I'm gonna line that up, center it best I can based on the seams. Let's see, that's not a perfect circle, so I'm just gonna have to make a gust in it. Needle up, drag, lock. Pause, shift, come around, lock, ditch, needle up, come up. I'm gonna start approximately a half inch from the face. I'm gonna echo the triangle. lock and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and I'm going to come down that seam up again this is where I'm simply ad-libbing to stabilize the block follow that line that I made previous I'm gonna go over because the circle was um, piece by quarters and again this is when you're working on something like this especially with matching thread you make some decisions about how you're going to stabilize it would I come up here and do anything else up here I suppose I could but I'm not going to down You're not really going to see anything here but texture. I like the echo outside of that original white triangle. It would make up the nose. There's that. Okay, so that part is done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to slide over here. I'm going to go down to here. I'm going to go right into the ear and I split the ear. I'm going to lock my stitches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to the other ear. And I'm going to repeat the same thing over in the other ear as well as the tail. And then we'll move into the body of the sheep. Again, you know, as we're doing this, the one thing that I want to say is this is the point when you're quilting after enough quilts. You don't always have to have a plan because really in these areas, pretty much what you're doing is you're just trying to make sure that everything's stable with a little bit of stylizing, but a lot of stylizing would be lost. As you can see from just at this point, 90% of this quilt's life is going to be spent in full light. That means you're not even really going to see a lot of the work. And about 10 to 15% of the time is going to be that dusk or dawn time where you're going to actually see the texture from the quilting. And that's when that's going to matter. Okay, so now I'll take that out of there. Let me see, I want to come down here to the feet and we don't have enough room there so I will not do that right now. And actually I'm probably just going to simply ditch around there. Ok, 
Okay, let me go over to the tail. Gonna ditch around the tail. And that is the gift of a double curve. You can have it going one way and then simply flip it around when you go around an arc or something like that. So now what I'm going to do is grab my ditcher. Same thing, right through the middle, just to keep it stable. Trim my tail, put that in my pile. Pull away. I'm going to take a second. I am going to roll while I have the black thread loaded. And I'm going to do a little bit to these um, legs. Just doing a little bit of echo in there. Lock and load. Repeat that on the other leg. so you can see it. Down. And you can see I've got my um, start speed mode on very slow, so it takes a few anchor stitches right there in the corner. That way you get a nice, smooth transition. Estimate a quarter of an inch. Up, lock, done legs. Now we're going to go into the body and figure out what we're going to do there. Okay, so inside the sheet now, I'm actually going to echo in all the way around the inside. Approximately a half of an inch. Again, I am not aiming for perfection. I am simply making sure that there's a little bit of an echoed effect. 
so that when I fill in all around here, the sheep will still pop forward. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this whole sheep with 45 degree crosshatch using the 45 degree rulers, both the small and the medium, just to make sure that I can make it all the way through the body. Now, I've got myself locked and loaded right there, so my first guy is going to be there. I am going to be using this center line seam from the sheep itself, and what I'm going to be doing is simply working my way all the way over. I'm going to start with, let me see, I'm going to do three quarter inch measurements. I know that this is my first measurement, so I'm going to go three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. Line that up, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. Now when I get over here into the white, I'm going to switch to my blue. Marks be gone. And... I'm only going to be making a little line right there because that's all I need. I don't need to chalk out the whole thing. So, three quarter, 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 three quarter three quarter, three quarter, three quarter. Now as I come over here, what I'm going to do is three quarter, so there will be my stop. Let me see, so as I'm working my way over, I will get to there, I'll get to there. I'm gonna make just one, two, three, just a few more little lines off of there, because as I'm going this angle, once I get to here, I'm still gonna have a little bit over here, so I would need possibly a few more here. Um, just like over here on the face, if we go over to the face, I need it to go off a little bit this way, even though we're starting way up here because of that angle. And also the reason that I'm going off over on this side is because, in fact, I'm going to give myself just a little bit more um, when we come back the other way with the other angle. I might need a little bit angling there. So I kind of want to take it off both sides. I'm going to start with our small 45. Again, what I'm lining up is simply I'm going to line up here and my 45 degree angle is here. So it's following that seam straight across, up, back. I'm gonna come down, pause. I'm gonna line everything up. Again, this is going to be the process. Just so you can see, this is not fast work. So I'm going to follow that head around till I touch up. Now, I am now going to be working my way over, but I'm going to be working from this outer top edge down. Okay, so now I'm going to come and bring my ruler where it needs to be. 
At this point, maybe I would want to grab a curve and follow that ditch, but I'm just gonna take my time, stay right there, down, back, replace the ruler on the next spot. Do not, when you're doing something like this, that's pretty close there, down here. But if you're off just a hair bit, don't freak out. Don't like, oh no, because it's gonna crawl. We're doing a really big area. That's why I chose to do three quarter inch cross hatch because if it's not exactly three quarter inch, it's not gonna be visually noticeable. If I would have used half inch or quarter inch, what would happen is the eye would pick up on the fact if there are any wider areas. But because I'm using three quarters of an inch, that's kind of the sweet spot when you can kind of do a few oops and not have to worry about it a lot. Again, I'm checking here. And Mr. Richie, if you want to take me right down to there just so they can kind of see. Okay, so do you see that seam going straight across there? Okay, so I'm using that. And then I'm simply following that ditch down, down, up, stop, travel, line it up. Okay, I'm looking at that space, checking that out. Like I said, it's a slower process over, stop, travel the ditch a ways, stop, line that back up, make sure that my 45 degree is on the line across the top, bring that back, if I start to lean or get off just a little bit, just take it back, um, if you get off um, a little bit more than a little bit, then make sure that you make up the difference over two of your diagonal curves. That way it won't be so noticeable. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to visually space this one now. Here. Back. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is this. As I work my way across, if we get a wider shot here, what I want to do is down here, because this ear, I'm only going to be going down to the ear and then back. Down to the ear and then back down to the ear and then back down to the ear. Or I'm sorry, down past when we get past the ear and all the way over that way. Then once I come back the opposite way, then I'll do the same thing. And then what I'll do is I'll come back down here. I'll use the lines that I had already sewn with my ruler. And then I will do the same thing coming up the opposite way as I work around the ear. So that way I'm not going to come down, lock stitches, drag, duh -duh, come down. I don't want to do that. Could you? Of course you could. I don't want to. Okay, so now I'm going to... Look at that angle again. Now, I'm off. So I have lost my, um, my home line. But I'm not going to sweat it. I'm going to visually just go for it. I'm going for crosshatch now. And again, you know, it's one of those things. You can look at it as, oh my goodness, I lost my way. Or, oh, make it work. Everything's going to work. And that's what eventually you want to do. You want to get to the point in your quilting when you can say, I'm simply going to make it work. I'm not, to, I'm not referring to a show quilt here. We all know that that's going to be a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to get my 45 degree. I'm going to go a little higher now. I'm over in that corner. So what I'm going to do now Go up. I'm going to follow that ditch and get this part out of the way. 
going to line that up to there. I know that that's the spot that probably would have looked like it came down. Over. Follow that down again. Find my spot. Line that up. Come down. Back up. And I'm going to continue working my way across. Okay, so um, I was originally going to go ahead and put crosshatch in here, but now when it's done and I look at it, I like it. I actually don't want to do the crosshatch in here. So I like it just like it is. It adds some nice texture. Um, and I think the crosshats would be a little bit too much. So we're going to leave this like this. I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to go around the sheep and I'm going to fill in everything that's around the sheep and continue on down the quilt um, for our conclusion of this particular wonderful nativity quilt. Okay, so being that it's the um, holiday season, we know that a lot of you are very busy. So we're just going to do that section, which is enough of that. And next week, which I believe uh, the Saturday is going to be the week before Christmas. Is that correct, Rich? Am I right there? Or is there another one? We're real close to Christmas. So next week will be the conclusion of this particular quilt. That's going to be done. Um, and then we're going to finish with our tile quilt that we were doing. And also, of course, we have our wonderful hollow cube piecing coming up. So that's coming up real quick. And actually, we're going to start with a live one and we're going to schedule that. So definitely check your um, uh, notifications for your Patreon and we'll go there. All right, everybody, have a wonderful uh, second week of December. We'll see you down the road. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Goodbye, everybody.